Hello there, welcome back. I hope you're doing well, and I, and I hope you're ready right now to sit down and do some more study on this subject that we've been talking about. We opened it up last week by talking about God's sovereignty. And we're going to keep talking about trusting God's sovereignty. Last week, as you know, if you, were, if you were involved with the study, you know that we talked about this foundation that God is sovereign. He has all authority on heaven and on earth. And he is God and we are not. And we need to submit to that idea that God is sovereign. Once we submit to that and we are able to, to acknowledge that and be okay with that, then we move on to this idea of trusting it. And I was talking with a friend of mine not too long ago, and we were praying together, and, and he said, you know, he thanked God that God is a loving God. And I, and I thought about that for a minute, and I said, man, that is so true. We serve a loving God, and we need to be thankful for that, because God is God. There's nothing we can do about that. But what if God was a tyrant? What if God was a short-tempered, fused kind of guy, kind of God that, that lashed out at us at every move we made? Wouldn't that be a terrible thing to be under? But we're not under that at all. We are under a sovereign God who loves us. And that makes all the difference in the world. And so what we're going to start talking about today is foundational truths. These foundational truths are biblical and they are not going to be altered and they are never going to change. And there are many, but I want to talk about four of them that will help us be able to trust God's sovereignty. So the first one we're going to talk about today is God is still on the throne. Now this is so important, and through scripture we see this visual of God. We see this view of God that is painted for us in different places. But the reason it's painted for us in different places is because throughout history it has been questioned. You know, I remember back in the 70s there was that expression that came up, God is dead. As if we as human beings could pronounce God dead, right? It was silly in, in, in theory, but people were trying to put God away. They were trying to say, you know, God doesn't really have a relevance in our lives anymore. And that was so untrue then and it's so untrue now. God not only has a relevance in our lives, he's sovereign over our lives. He is the sovereign God and he's on the throne. And I want to look at a passage of scripture here in Revelation chapter 4 that gives us a view of God that, that just really helps us understand. It says, day and night they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being." What strikes me about this picture of reality in heaven is that this is ongoing. This is something that was true then and it's true now and it's always been true. God is worshiped. God is adorned as a sovereign God. And in this picture, I, I like the way John records it here. He says, day and night, they never stop saying. If you could imagine something that's going on all the time, we might think something like that eventually is going to get to us, right? It's going to get old. <laughs> We're going to think, you know, we need something new. Our culture today, I mean, one thing gets popular and it's gone in no time and we're on to the next thing. And that exists in our culture all over the place. But in God's kingdom, it's different. God is holy and he's omnipotent and he's on the throne and he'll always be on the throne. We get caught up sometimes on what's going on here on earth. We struggle with all of the, the chaos sometimes and, and, and what's going on. But nothing changes in heaven. God is still on the throne and he's being adored day and night. And these creatures around his throne are constantly giving him praise. They're falling before him worshiping, giving him glory and honor and power and, and because he created all things and, and, and all things are sustained by him. And that's so true for us today. What we have to understand as a foundational truth is no matter what happens on this earth, no matter what is going on or what we're dealing with, God is still on the throne. That's a foundational truth. And the reason it's so foundational is because we have an enemy. An enemy who wants to rock our world to such a degree that we would doubt and even 
let go of that thought. I want to talk about spiritual warfare. That's what we're in. We are constantly in spiritual warfare. Now the difficult thing about understanding spiritual warfare is because we can't actually see it. We can see results of it, but we get caught up in only what we can see. But it takes faith and it takes understanding God's sovereignty to understand that it's far greater than what we can see. When, when we deal with spiritual warfare, we're dealing with the core of the real battle. Because in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul put it like this. He said, put on the full armor of God in verses 11 and 12, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Man, doesn't that just sound like a sci-fi movie? Doesn't that make you step back and say, what is happening here, right? Look at all this action. But this is where it's really at. See, what we get fooled into thinking is that our battle is against one another. We hate people, we get upset at people, we get angry with people, we get short-fused with people, and we blame people, and sometimes we take out our anger on one another. And, and that's just like fighting uh, the, the irrelevant, because what's really going on is it says right there, our, our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against these spiritual forces of evil that are trying to take our attention, our sight, off of the throne of God. What God wants for you and me to understand in these years that we're on this earth, and by the way, in case you haven't noticed, time's flying, okay? Before long, we won't be here anymore. And for some of us, that's closer than others, but the thing is, in all reality, life is short. It's a vapor, James said. So we need to understand that when we get caught up in so much of this world, we lose focus of what's real. What's real is God's sovereignty. And his power and, and him being on the throne and his dominion, that's what we're under. But the devil is a schemer. Do you notice that, what, what Paul said? He said we need to stand up against the devil's schemes. It's a good word. What's a scheme mean to you? If you say, hey, that guy over there, he's a schemer. Is that somebody you want to be friends with? Is that somebody you want to pal around with? No, because it's deception. Scheme, a schematic kind of person is somebody who loves deception, who loves to create ways to make you think something's real that's not. And most of the time, schemers want to rob you of your money. They want to take you whatever they want to do to you. The devil's a schemer. What he wants to do is he wants to fool you and me into thinking something is real that isn't. And that real that he's trying to create for us is in this world. That all these things that you and I spend so much time worrying about and fretting about and agonizing over and being fearful of, those are not the things where the real battle is. Because the real battle, as he said, is against these authorities in this dark world. And they're trying to take you and me captive. Now that's the spiritual battle. That's where you and I are. I don't know if you know that or not, but you're in a spiritual warfare. If you're a Christian, welcome to the war, okay? Now, we need to look at this battle and understand that it's real and that there are things going on in our lives where, where we are being tempted and we're being fooled into thinking things we ought not to take our mind off of God and put it on this world to such a degree that we get fearful and afraid and worried. And some of those are normal things because we are human beings, okay? And, and we do struggle with that. But all the time, we need to remember that day and night, they never stop praising God in heaven. And you and I, one day, thank the Lord Jesus Christ, will be at that throne ourselves. We will be among that throng of people who are, who are chanting day and night, how wonderful and awesome and powerful and worthy of praise our God is. Isn't that just, didn't that just make goosebumps come on your, your skin? It should, because that's our reality. That's our future. That's where we're going. And the foundational truth is that that never changes. Another instance in the Bible is in Isaiah chapter 6. When Isaiah was given an incredible opportunity to see that throne room, in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 4, listen to what it says. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were the seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two wings they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, 
Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. This is a tremendous... Can you imagine having a dream like that? Can you imagine Isaiah getting to see that for real, to understand this is what's going on? And meanwhile, what God was telling him was, before you become my prophet, I want you to see what's going on in heaven. Because I don't want you to ever forget the reality of heaven. Because that is what's real. I am in control. And I am the God of the universe. And Isaiah, you remember that and you will never falter. If we remember that, we will never falter. If we will keep moving towards that throne and keep understanding that, that God is still on that throne, no matter what's happening, no matter what chaos is going on, folks, we can't lose. And that's the point of this passage. The point of reality in the Bible is that there is a scene that right now we can't actually see it because of our physical limitations. But not far from now, and man, isn't there some days, I know for me, when I focus on this more than others, when I'm just so thankful this is not my home. When I'm so thankful that this world is not where I'm going to be for eternity. I'm going to be with God, and I'm going to be at that scene. But spiritual warfare, the devil and all his demons, what they want us to believe is that's not true. To get so consumed with this world that we forget that God is still on the throne. I remember one time when I was, uh, my, my, my daughter was young. One of our daughters and I were on the uh, porch and we were on the porch swing. And it was late at night and we were looking up at the sky. And, and I'll never forget, she looked up at one of those stars that was way out there. You barely see it shimmering. And she said, Daddy, is that a star that God made? And I said, yes, it is, honey. And I, and I stopped and I thought, and you know, this really, I'm telling you, it's crazy. You can laugh later or laugh with me if you want to. But I'm telling you, we're so fragile in our thinking. It dawned on me at that moment, and I tried to explain this to her. I said, honey, that's really not a star. And she looked up at me like she said, what is it? I said, it's actually the light that projected from that star about 100 years ago. <laughs> now, of course, that didn't make for a great moment with my daughter because she was like, what? But what I was trying to tell her was that star doesn't define God. That's just the light from a star that was projected. We are so blessed to be God's creation that we have all these wonderful things around us that show us day in and day out that God is still in control. Those stars, everything we see around us, those things don't change. We can't change them. It reminds me of Psalm chapter 8. And, and this is a passage I, I wanted to get to today because this just engulfs so much about God. Psalm 8 verses 1 through 4. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe of the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? That's beautiful. What God, what this psalm is telling us that, that the praise of, of children and infants are giving God the glory that he deserves, that he's established, look at that, a stronghold against your enemies. There is nobody who can rise up and defeat God. Nobody can do it. Not everywhere in the universe, God is sovereign. He's on the throne and that will never change. And when we reflect on that, and when we think about the enormous mass of creation that God has made, most of us, we haven't even noticed yet, okay? We can see certain things in our telescopes and all that, but we, it's just that much of what God has created. And the psalmist, in a humbled thought, said, what is man that you're mindful of him? Man that you care for him. But he does. He's mindful of us. And he's on the throne. And he wants us to know, Kelly, your name, don't worry about this stuff. There's a spiritual war going on, and you stick with me, God says, you win. And we will one day be at that throne room. But it's a foundational truth that we have to stick with, and that foundational truth is this, that God is still on the throne. So when we talk about trusting God's sovereignty and these four foundational truths, the first one we've looked at today is this, God is still on the throne. 
That is one foundational truth that I want all of us to focus on this week. When you get tempted, when you start to become afraid, when you start to worry about what's going on in this world, stop for a moment. Look back at Revelation. Look at Isaiah and other places where it shows us that throne room. And just get into that. Let that become your focus. Go to your knees if you want to. Whatever it takes to that moment to realize, I don't need to be afraid. Because God is sovereign. He loves me. And he's still on the throne. Let that sink in this week and come back next week and join us because next week we're going to look at the second foundational truth, learning how to trust God's sovereignty. I hope you have a wonderful night. I hope you feel blessed, feel God's presence because he loves you. God bless you.